Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a favorite five session. Um, this one is going to be all about gouache and my favorite five colors of gouache. Somebody very kindly requested that, so I'm very happy to oblige. I love gouache, and um, even though I've been painting for about 40 years, I'm relatively new to gouache in that I've used gouache for about five of those 40 years. Um, I may have had a, sl a very small fling with it in high school, but I haven't got a really decent memory of that, so my brain may have made it up. However, I use it a lot now, and this started in the first lockdown when I decided to do more art again after quite um, what felt like a long break, but probably wasn't all that long, but I wanted to really dial that in and say, right, it's going to be art in my life, and I'm going to start by doing some courses online um, and I started with the Domestica course and the lady said that what we needed was to have some gouache well I hadn't got any so I went and bought some and the rest as they say is history I have a whole heap here this is basically my almost my entire collection I've got a few more jars and so forth like that but this I don't have a lot and the reason I don't have a lot is because I don't need a lot at this point because they all intermix freely the tubes last for ages and what I love about gouache that I never got from acry acrylic gouache which was my takeover favorite I started in oil like a lot of people. I dabbled in watercolour, but I use my watercolour really thickly and darkly like you might use acrylic. So then I thought, right, well, I'll just use that. So I used acrylic gouache for absolutely ages. Thing is with that is when it's dried, it's dried and you get what you get. With gouache, there's absolutely no waste because, I mean, when these little tubes are absolutely finished, I cut them open and then I worry away at it with a brush with some water on it until I've basically washed it clean. There is zero waste. Some of my things are a bit older. I do have one acrylic gouache that's now going on 30 years old. I'm still using that, but that's that's a different video. So don't think that because like a tooth of tube of toothpaste you have squeezed everything out and that's it. No, that's not it. There's more in there. So anyway, um this is the gouache collection and all sorts of tubes and different colours, some double ups and all sorts of brands because I, I did subscribe to an art box for a while. So they basically put stuff in and you get what you get. I've got some in jars as well. Love these. They're not too, you know, not too bad. I think I prefer the tubes, but the jars are also good. And again, you can get in there with some water and make a wash. Speaking of that, I use gouache totally different to other people. Now, gouache was once in, it was first invented for print artists, or not print as in um, pulling prints, but um, illustrations and things like that, where they would then scan and make a print of their work or photograph and make a print of their work. And the idea was, is they needed a paint that was completely matte, no shine whatsoever, so that all of the detail was preserved. And a lot of people including a an artist I admire very much called Susie West. Her book is worth a look. She does fabulous, proper pictures with gouache where everything's matte and, and blocks of colour. Really, really love her work, but I do, I use it slightly differently. I use my gouache like a wash, actually. I'm just going to pop that out the way because I don't believe I need it. Sorry about the arm there. Um, let me just grab this sketchbook. You're getting a sneak peek of this sketchbook because this one's not ready for show yet. But So for goodness sake, don't tell anyone. But this just gives you an idea of how I use gouache and it is slightly different. I like to use it in dull, muddy washes. All the things that you're not supposed to do. In fact, that's why a lot of people don't like gouache very much because they say it's muddy. I like it because it's muddy. And as you can see, my style is quite muted. Stay tuned. I'm doing a whole video on this where I actually go through it properly and tell you what, it, what it is I've done. Um, and yeah, oh, you've got to see, I'm sorry. I'm going to use this as an excuse to show you my ongoing um, collage project at the moment, my wings meant to go up there the feathers my handsome mallard drake i love him anyway the point is let's just concentrate on a picture the point is i like to use it as a muddy 
background wash, <clears throat> excuse me, also for different effects. All of these sorts of things. And that's how I use it. So it's not the way other people use it. So, yeah, that's just a short sneak peek. Let's get on. Um, five colours out of all of these beautiful colours. Now, please don't faint dead away when I open this. My Patreons have already seen this, so they're prepared. But everybody else is a bit, probably a bit shocked because you're not supposed to do this. <laughs> this is my gouache palette. I made this, I bought this on Amazon and I squeezed colours into the pans and when they get too dry, I give them a mist with some water and wake them all up again. And like I said, you can go in, if it's a bit dry, just go in with your brush and have a bit of a scrap, scratch at it with some water and it'll come back to life. It's absolutely fine. You saw from my sketchbook, it's fine. Today, last week we had luminance pencils. Today we're going to do this. And I had to find five favourite colours. So I've got four favourite colours plus one I mix. So sometimes I use them straight from the pans and sometimes I mix them and make something different. Sometimes I allow them to mix themselves by just whatever I've been working on. I might just scoop up a bit of that and use it. The downside of that is, of course, you can never do it again because that is unique. So yeah, it's that's a hard one I like to use this dome blender for my gouache to get those scrubby effects that's one thing but today I'm going to just use a normal number four round brush this one's a da Vinci nothing special just a, a nice brush love da Vinci brushes so my number one color to choose would have to be a warm gray I'm not putting any any names on these for the simple reason that if you, where you're watching may not be where I've bought these paints and European German paint I live in Germany and German paints you can't necessarily get them elsewhere we can't get what you've got so what I've decided to do on this occasion is just say a warm grey or a dark orange and then you can see what you've got at home the reason I'm showing you any colours like that is because these are the colours that I've used to get the effects in that sketchbook. So if you like that particular look and you like that style, these are some of the colours I use. So my favourite five for gouache would have to be a warm grey. And again, like I said, I use it with quite a bit of water to create a bit of a wash. Let me get my trusty reusable cloth here. I love those. My next favourite would be a dark blue. This one is either an indigo or a Payne's grey. Looks more like an indigo to me. Love that. Then a dark brown. This one's Castle Earth in case we're interested because that one's stuck in my mind for some reason. Nice rich brown. And see, what I do then is any brightness that I'm going to put on, I'll put it on over the top of these. But my base layers are quite moody and deep. Next is this dark green. Don't want to adulterate it too much there because there's a bit of mess going on. That one. And number five is an amalgam of the last three. So I would grab my brush, get a bit of dark blue, a bit of this nice brown and a bit of the green. And I would mix them together and see what I come up with. And it's a very nice, deep, bluey green. So that is a marriage of these three to make that one. And it's, it's dark enough to almost call itself black. Be aware that the lighter colours will dry slightly darker in gouache and the dark colours dry slightly lighter, um, which is odd sometimes. But while I've got that on the brush, let's not waste it. A little bit more green in that. And let us um, put in, start this today's sketch. It's not the brush I want to use, however... Just get some of this off. I think we'll swap to the other one. The reason I like this brush, 
this one particular, I don't have to worry about the tip. I can scrub. And that's how I get that colour going. A bit more green in that, which is the great thing about something you've mixed yourself. Do what you like. A bit of green here. I'm using it quite dry. Sometimes I use it quite wet, but always quite scrubby. And like I said, to some people's tastes, muddy. Bit of horizon there. I really do like a brush where you can actually do that scrubby sort of technique, whereas so many you have to watch the tip and make sure that it stays nice and you would never scrub unless you're wanting to ruin the brush. This one's a Deco Art Traditions Dome Blender number 12, which is quite, it, they're, they're a good brush. Um, easier to get in America, which is where this one's come from. Probably could have put the sky in first. Mix that in. Do have to be careful because what you're doing will mix together. And you can do that on purpose if you want to. For example, if you don't, if you want to soften something out, you can get your brush with no colour, just a bit of water, and reactivate the paint. That's both a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> Sometimes some people love it, so others not so much. Lots of scribbling goes on in the early stages. Maybe a bit, a bit of water. You don't need very much water at all. Just a little bit to give it some drama. Now, what I would be doing with this normally is I would dry it and I have a Ranger heat tool to do that with. I particularly like that. Makes it nice and quick. See, for example, that's dry. It's not crispy dry, but it's dry. That's too, I don't like it. So this brush is just wet. Fix it. It's okay, like it now. Bit of rain there. That's why I love gouache. Whereas if you had anything else like oil, I mean, oil, you've got six years to, to make up your mind. <laughs> Not exactly, but you know what I mean. You've got some time to make up your mind. Acrylic, it's done. Done deal. So now the way I would work over this gouache is that would be it for that. Then I would grab some of my favorite pencils. Let's have a look at a Caran d'Ache Green Ochre, which is one of my favourites. And give this a little bit of interest. Again, I'm still scribbling. It's quite a loose style, but it's not really. As you saw from my sketchbooks, it can go quite sort of um, detailed. Here we're assuming the light's coming in from the left, it usually does in my pictures. This is not a green cloud, it will make sense in a second. I might think about aha, I looked for that for a week. My chocolate drawing pencil, I'd put it into the wrong pen pot. <laughs> it's um, yeah, I, I'm I do that sort of thing. So now if we put in my derwent light fast here. I love this forest pencil because although it's green and it's in the green section, it's also brown and grey and black. All of those things. So it's perfect for just adding some quick details. And you can keep it going for the same here, supposing we wanted this to be ploughed. 
lot of it at this time of the year. I live in the countryside in Germany and there are a few ploughed fields, not so many anymore. They're starting to get things in them now. Okay, and just a little bit of texture. I love muted colour and I love texture. Sometimes the gouache is just a shape that shows me where to go next. So I might just put a little bit of light on that. This is a Derwent drawing in yellow ochre, Derwent drawing pencil. It's one of my favourites as well. And if I wanted to make any sort of foreground interest I'm just using a food nib marker from Faber Castell just make some grasses because I tend to like doing that and as you can see all of these ingredients play incredibly nicely together brambly bits, hedgerows and what have you. I might come back with a smaller brush and my mixed green and just put in a couple of leaves. I just love that completely dark, deep, moody green. I've done some things with it that I'm incredibly pleased with and wish they weren't in my sketchbook with another picture on the back that I quite liked as well. So now I feel as though I can't sort of take them, cut them out and frame them. <laughs> so, yeah, these are problems I make for myself, I, I suspect. And here again, I would grab this brush and wipe it. This is my dome blender that I don't have to worry about so much. Just to put some more interest in that front bit there. You can also tap for different texture, stipple with any of these. Particularly interesting where you've got vines like this and there's quite a lot happening. A fair bit of colour in the bottom there. That actually started out as a dark blue blob, if you remember. And then going under here. I love things that are touching me at random on the table like that. What I'm doing is I'm stippling in here quite dark with all these really dark colours. just to add some more dimension. You might consider going through there too and just putting some texture in. Foreground really helps you, it anchors you to where you are observing it from. Okay. I tend to do to one part of the photo or picture photo sketch I tend to do something to another part with that same color to tie it all together so that is very very quickly as you can see <laughs> that's how I would use gouache to make a quick sketch with some colored pencils and a liner um, a fine liner like I said don't be don't be neat don't worry if they go muddy just do things that make you feel good and I particularly love this use and these are my five favorite gouache colors so it has to be a warm gray for me a dark blue a dark brown and a dark green and then use these to mix that last one in no particular ratio there's no recipe for that it's if you like a bluey green put more blue in if you like a greeny green try a bit more green if you like a 
a, a deeper brownie green that's almost a black put more of that in so that one's yeah and this is what I do with it. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you've seen, don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And if you like my art style, consider joining my Patreon because all of this sort of thing, I go into in huge amounts of detail and um, tell you all about it and what you need to know there. So yeah. I would absolutely love to see you there. All of the links are in the description box below and I'm on Instagram as well. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoy your day and I hope you got some inspiration from this video. See you next time. Bye.